This episode is sponsored by Card Kingdom. Go to cardkingdom.com slash studies to pick up your favorite wild looking magic cards. From Faithless Looting to the Secret Lair Ponder and even older hits like Stasis, there are countless ways to put a visual twist on your favorite magic deck. If you watch the Foils video, you'll know how much I love Mischief's take on Cut to Ribbons. For all your magic needs, Card Kingdom provides high quality products and responsive customer service and will ship your entire order in one package. I've become a member of Basilisk, the mission-driven esports organization founded to inspire scientists through difficult gameplay. The team at Basilisk are drawn to games that reward curiosity, study, and process, like chess, Starcraft, and magic. To celebrate our partnership, we are giving away nine copies of Omniscience and a foil Enchanted Tales Ristic Study to the grand prize winner. Follow the link below to enter. Thank you to Basilisk for the partnership and support. This is Faithless Looting by Carly Janine Mazur. It was painted with oils and acrylics on masonite. It measures 18 inches wide by 24 inches tall. Faithless Looting debuted in Strixhaven for the Mystical Archive series in April 2021. Upon release, the painting was met with extraordinary backlash and blistering criticism, a rainfall of verbal daggers and harassment and outcry. Faithless Looting was a printing error, Faithless Looting was a product of woke politics. Faithless Looting was commissioned to bring the end of Western civilization. Faithless Looting was also Carly Mazur's first painting for Magic, a game she admired as a kid. When I was like five years old, my brother would take me to the comic shop and he would play Magic. And I was like too young for it at the time. I would look at all the cards. I'd look at everything in the cases, all the comics. You know, grew up on 90s cartoons, which were super wacky. And I knew that I wanted to draw for the rest of my life. Like many of us, her earliest memories of magic involved staring enraptured at illustrations on old cards. Living Wall by Anson Maddox is an image that has remained with her since childhood, one that inspired her to pursue visual arts. Indiscernible viscera, a row of disembodied teeth, eyes floating in a gelatinous membrane. Echoes of its composition reappeared on a recent commission, a book cover for C.J. Lee's slasher novel titled Mavefly. Carly's style is a marriage of pop art color palettes and graphical textures layered along flat planes. True to life realism is reserved for the human figures, usually women, who interface with two dimensional vectors and objects like spiritual successors to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The digital world is invasive and inescapable in her work. Key to her process is mapping compositions in Photoshop. Preliminary sketches involve resizing and reshaping elements on screens before transferring the outlines to hardboard and painting everything by hand. Sheets of gold and silver leaf complement the pieces with a glimmer unachievable in oils. When I was in high school, I was definitely admiring more of the modern late 90s, early 2000s magic artists like Rebecca Gay, Scott Fisher, Donato Giancola, Dan DeSantos. Dan DeSantos actually grew up in the same town that I did. So we had the same art teachers and every single teacher was like, oh, you remind me so much of the student that I had 10 years ago named Dan DeSantos. Scott Fisher, Dan DeSantos, Rebecca Gay, the lineage is traceable in Mazur's illustrations. But she never thought she could do work for magic. Her paintings were too out there and different and weird. They didn't lend to the game's traditionally high fantasy trappings. I would talk to art directors and they would say, your, your stuff is phenomenal, but you need that one project, that one person to give you that chance. I'm so grateful for Tom Jencott to give me that chance to jump into magic. And I was thrilled. I was like, yes, absolutely. I do want to do this. <laughs> when Tom Jencott contacted Carly Mazur, 
he didn't ask that she dilute or refocus her vision. He loved her portfolio and gave her free reign to paint as she wished. The first art description he sent called for a stylized illustration of a famous spell being cast for the first time, an act of desecration and power. Central to the piece would be a female cultist in a hooded robe, standing in a symmetrical pose. She holds two bowls pointing in opposite orientations. The bowl in one hand blazes straight upward with magical fire. The other pours wine downward onto the floor. She is in the interior of a stylized wrecked cathedral, perhaps with arched gothic windows or a broken stained glass mural in the backdrop. Jenkot invited Mazur to consider tarot cards for this concept. Tarot is entrenched in symbolism. Each card relies on esoteric imagery to communicate its message. Carly cites temperance as an influence for faithless looting. In temperance, we find an androgynous winged angel standing with one foot in water and one on land, metaphors of the spiritual and earthly realms respectively. They are donned in a white robe, the color of purity. Across their chest is the tetragrammaton, the four-letter word for God. Behind the angel grow irises, a nod to the Greek goddess of the same name. Temperance is among the four cardinal virtues, and every component of the image communicates balance and moderation. The figure in the foreground pours water into wine between two goblets, thinning the liquids to equilibrium. Faithless looting departs from the same visual language of the tarot, but inverts its message. This spell rejects self-restraint and embraces chaos. The cups are dissociated, the wine is tossed aside, the white-robed angel is a zealot in red. Unlike in previous printings of the card, the illustration does not provide a realistic one-to-one -one representation of the mechanic or the location. This was among the many criticisms that Carly faced with the piece. Uninformed players claimed that nowhere did the painting depict faithless or looting. The Japanese mystical archive version by Shiro Yayoi is compositionally identical, but it was not disparaged in the same way. Understanding the symbolism of the tarot cards that inspired the prompt helps us read these images and interpret their signs. Not every painting must be so literal. Carly also withstood complaints that the piece was unfinished. I knew from the get-go that they were asking for full card art, and I didn't want to put too much detail in the bottom because no one was really going to see it anyway but I did want it to be visually interesting. And so that's why most of the detail is, you know, up towards the top. A lot of people were surprised to see that it was a full painting rather than just that one little cutout. Many fans noted that drastically cropping the portrait to fit the card frame did a great disservice to Carly's work. Others blamed the yellow of the mystical archive frame for clashing with the painting's primary colors. Malagor Aramag on Twitter tested the illustration in a variety of frames from Magic's past, and all of them make strong candidates for a future reprint. The subdued red of the pre-modern frame gives priority to the vibrant tones and lets them shine, while the full art borderless frame embraces the verticality of the composition without compromise. It is undeniable that card frames influence how we experience illustrations on Magic cards, even if they are intended to be partially invisible. Among the most vitriolic comments were insults from people who claimed this was a five-minute project in Microsoft Paint, that a third grader could do it, or that they themselves could do it. People are so accustomed to digital artwork nowadays that they just thought, like, I just took a photo and just slapped it on and called it a day. It was a lot more involved than that. People were actually kind of shocked that people paint things traditionally still, but it's so important for me to do that because there's a lot of texture and there's a lot of information that you get from paint. It just doesn't exist in digital artwork. Personal attacks and mockery fell in abundance following the preview announcement. It was clear that Carly's work struck a particular nerve in certain subsections of magic that many were threatened by this departure in style. Dismissing a painting based on its technical choices or perceived skill set 
is deader than all the dead horses. I could do that is reactionary muck, an elementary view of the world. I could do that is the rallying cry of the dense and the insecure. Those who open themselves to challenging paintings and music and dance and poetry do not measure the value of art against their ability to reproduce it. Art is not a pissing match. Art is an exercise in empathy. Art is a vessel. It fosters relationships between people, between objects and sentiments and ideas. Art is an open invitation to expand your perspective and grow. First and foremost, it was so different than what we've been seeing on Magic Art. I mean, people fear change. I understand that people who play Magic the Gathering aren't going to have the same eye as people who go to see a MoMA exhibit in New York City, because I understand people have different tastes, and it was the first time seeing that kind of artwork in that context. Despite the outrage, Carly told me she took the feedback to heart and did well to separate signal from white noise. I took it as legitimate critique. You have to take critique piecemeal, because if you take everyone's advice, you're going to lose yourself in it. But if you can look at it, even if it's harsh and mean criticism, if you can get something out of that, I think that's very important. Four years removed from the finished piece, there are some details that Carly would approach differently. I would probably give the figure makeup with lipstick or face paint or tattoos or something. I'm a One Piece fan and there's so much characterization like in that show. Since 2020, Carly has only painted a handful of cards for Magic, yet she remains active in galleries and busy with private commissions. Although Faithless Looting was singled out as unorthodox, none of the 63 cards from the Mystical Archive series align with the accepted aesthetic identity of Magic. None of them are medieval high fantasy. None of them would be classified as imaginative realism. In the past five years, art directors have widened their scope to welcome illustrators and graphic designers who break the mold of tradition and bring new life to the game. The rules have been rewritten. The old guard has left their post. In many ways, this era resembles the first five years of Magic, when a rowdy crew of misfits had a wild idea for a trading card game and an avant-garde approach to its imagery. The sky was the limit then, and commissions like Faithless Looting prove it is the limit once more. A very simple question. Do you do you like this piece? Now now that you're a few years removed, like do you like do you like the painting? Yeah, I like the painting. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> great. Great to hear it. Carly Mazur will have artist proofs displayed at Nucleus Gallery in Alhambra, California for the second Magic the Gathering in Miniature Show, hosted by Donnie Kaltreiter. The exhibition opens April 13th, and it looks like Faithless Looting will indeed make an appearance. As an artist, you have to offer something to the world that only you can. And if you have, you know, this artwork that, you know, falls into the same mold as everything else, you're not going to stand out. With me, I guess I've always been a difficult child and wanted to, you know, just do my own thing, which was, you know, present in college when I would get these assignments and I would get like a B minus because I didn't follow the prompt to a T. If you're aspiring to be an artist of any kind, just be true to yourself. If you have inspirations, don't try to be like them. Take what you like from anything that you like, put it together, see what happens. You can purchase prints of Faithless Looting at originalmagicart.store. You can purchase Carly's original paintings on her website and through the various galleries where she shows her work. You can support this show by joining the Patreon and by making radical art. Thank you for watching.